Hey, this is Dr. Matt Lyon. I'm really excited about um, our new emerging video blog series, which I'm very excited to do every week. That's my plan. That's my goal. I want to do one of these per week, totally outside of my comfort zone. Um, I love watching uh, people who I respect and emulate. I love watching their YouTube videos and I always seem to have their stuff all together and perfect videos and great back sets and very articulate. I'm not sure if I have any of those things, but what I do have a desire to do is to share with you the living principles and strategies that we teach and practice at the Network Wellness Center of Charlotte to just help enrich your day, to help enrich your life, to bring you a bit of joy, uh, some inspiration, uh, to know that you're not alone. And, and if you are a practice member, either at the Network Wellness Center of Charlotte or anywhere with any great network practitioner. Um, our, our, our desire is to give you more grist for the mill in terms of your own progression of your own care and your own healing journey. And if you're watching this and you don't know what network care is, you can look it up online at the Network Wellness Center of Charlotte. Um, you can also look up Wise World Seminars or DonnieEpstein.com. Uh, also, giving credit where credit's due. I want to say that most of the stuff I'm going to share besides my own experience is probably completely unoriginal. I love to be a student of other people and I love to be in proximity to people who embody mastery. And so everything I share is probably going to be stuff that I've heard or have learned and wherever I can I want to give credit where credit's due. Straight away, um, two of my biggest inspirations are Donnie Epstein, who founded the work that I practice, so please look up his stuff, it's great. A lot of the system and structure of what we talk about comes from his amazing genius of viewing the, the body and the body-mind, so I really encourage you to look that up. Brian Johnson, who's a courageous teacher, uh, you can look him up at Brian Johnson or Philosopher's Notes, you can Google either of those terms, and he has amazing 10-minute videos, which chunk down and explain some of the best books uh, ever written. I love him. Some other influences have been Tony Robbins, uh, my, my couple of spiritual teachers that I'll mention as we go if it's appropriate, but credit where credit's due. You know, we always stand on the shoulders of giants, and any of us who have done great work typically have gotten it from other people and have made it our own. So I just want to welcome you, huge warm welcome from Charlotte, North Carolina to all of you. And the thing I want to talk about today is a follow-up to the blog series I just did. It was a four-part blog series looking at the different energy states that we experience. Well, what are energy states? Energy states are so simple. At any moment in your life, you're embodying a certain energy. And that certain energy translates into how you think, how you feel, how you act, how you connect with other people, how you connect with yourself, how you overcome challenge how we see obstacles through, how, how we deal with adversity, how we deal with failure, how we deal with rejection, how we create more of what we want, how we get aligned with our purpose. And so I want to encourage you to go back and read those, those four blogs because they describe the four energy states that are so important and so pivotal to understand. Energy poor, energy neutral, energy rich, and energy super rich. So please look at those and I want to describe a really interesting, amazing phenomenon that's come out of the positive psychology movement and I'm hoping this is helpful for you as it is for me. And it's the concept of mindset. What does that really mean? Well, Carol Dweck, who's a Stanford researcher and what she does is she studies motivation. She had this amazing research looking at basically what drives motivation, what drives happiness, what drives success or achievement. And one of the core principles she came down to is that it really depends on mindset. You know, perhaps in a more soulful way, we might say heart set. But either way, it's the fundamental position and perspective we take in life. It's the meaning that we ascribe to life. And what she said is it comes down to two things. People either have a fixed mindset or they tend to have a growth mindset. Let's, let's, let's unpack that. A fixed mindset, we basically pull back and we avoid that which seems dangerous, that which seems scary, that which seems challenging. In a fixed mindset, we assume that there's a certain subset of people who are born with genius and they just have it and I don't. Right? So genius is something you're born with and the people that are successful had either a special gift they were given or their circumstances supported that, but I don't have that. 
A fixed mindset is based on fear. And most of all, it's so afraid of failure. It's so afraid of being vulnerable. And so it tends to push away from anything that will ultimately challenge it. But it's very interesting. Real ability comes from taking responsibility. The cultivation of our, our capacity happens when we step outside of the comfort zone. Associated with a fixed mindset is a consistent chatterbox within one's head that says, I'm not enough, I don't have what it takes. And ultimately, and I learned this from Tony Robbins, that, you know, everything really comes down to fear. You know, the thing that blocks most people is one single thing, and that's fear. I remember being at a retreat I was leading in Jamaica. You can look that up on my website. I hope you'll come and play with me in Jamaica at some point. And I asked people, what, what's really standing in the way in your life right now of you embodying the highest version of yourself? And without fail, every single person said fear. Now consider, these are some very smart, developed, successful, wealthy, psychologically minded people and all came down to fear. What I learned from Tony, and I've seen this play out in my own life and in many clients' life, that we're basically afraid of two things. Failure, we won't be enough. We won't be loved. If you really boil everything down in a fixed mindset, is it's the strategy that says, let me avoid anything that's gonna put me in a position where I could be vulnerable, fail, not be enough, and lose love. And so this whole mindset then becomes fixed. You can't grow in a fixed mindset. A goldfish will only grow to the size of the bowl that's in. So if our mindset is small, if you read my blogs, they're energy poor, energy neutral, there's no growth to be had. And in fact, we're afraid of growth. And then we have a thought story system in our mind that says other people can have it but not me. Now the growth mindset is something totally different. It's energy rich. And in the most beautiful human beings, it's energy super rich. Here's some really cool concepts. First, in a growth mindset, we actually understand that anything meaningful in life is going to take a lot of work. In fact, we look forward to it because we know that that act of taking action and taking one step forward, one after the other, especially in alignment with the stuff that really makes us passionate, is going to grow and cultivate us into the most optimal version of ourselves. The other thing that growth mindset welcomes is failure. It understands that failure and making mistakes is as important part of the path in cultivating genius as having been born with innate natural talent. In fact, really, the the growth mindset completely understands that genius is not born, genius is made. Genius is your soul energy that you came into this world with that you are being called to bring forth to everyone else. And that's the real joy. It's the joy of bringing forth your soul's vision in the world. But here's the catch. We think that that's off at some destination down the road or when we finally get it all together. But I assure you, that may not ever happen. In fact, the genius inside of you is looking to be unleashed now through the steady, simple act of one step in front of the other, understanding that failure, challenge, obstacles are an opportunity. And the, the growth mindset says, hey, whatever's happening in my life, if I change the way I'm looking at it, if I ask myself a different question, I can get a different outcome. And if it doesn't like the outcome, it got it can say, hey, what's going on here? What do I have to learn? What do I really create? What help do I need? What resources do I need to address? Where's the grace in this? If there was a lesson in this for me, what would it be? And if we look at all the great masters of any discipline, they embody this. Sure, Mozart was born a genius, but most people don't know that he practiced until his fingers were bent. Uh, Brian Johnson told a great story about Michael Jordan. How many shots that Michael Jordan missed that were, that, that were basically game makers or game losers? And he lost a lot of them. As you know, Babe Ruth was the strikeout king as well as the home run king. So it's just important to remember that from your perspective of your heart, the growth mindset invites life and it invites you to follow your dreams. It invites you to follow your passions. It understands that the best parts of you are made and cultivated over time. And that perhaps you are meant to live a life of your dreams. You are meant to be happy. You are meant to be soulfully and wonderfully alive. So that's really what I wanna leave you with and that's energy super rich. And from that perspective, what decisions would we make? If you were in a growth mindset, what would you do with your day? 
I really wish you the best. Please continue to visit our website and all of our stuff, and I look forward to serving you soon.